This dollar represents all the tax revenue the government received in 2022 totaling $4.8 trillion. And we're gonna explore where this $4.8 trillion goes. Does half of it go to the military or does the post office receive less than a penny's worth? Well, what we first need to clarify is that while the government receives the equivalent of $1 in tax revenue, it actually spends more. In 2022, the government spent an additional $1.4 trillion. Over the past decade, the government has consistently spent over $100 billion more each month than it received, peaking at nearly $1 trillion in a single month during COVID. In fact, the debt is so bad that if we graph the US government's debt over time, it would total up to $33 trillion. If the entire government's budget was spent on repaying this debt, it would take over six and a half years. Fortunately, the government does pay off some of these debts in the form of treasuries or T-bonds. Treasuries work like loans from a bank, but US citizens are the lenders. If the government needs funding for something, say public education, they'll auction off bonds. And over time, once the deadline is met, these citizens are given back their money plus interest. This is where most US debt originates, and in 2022, about 15 cents of the dollar was used to pay off this debt, making it the third highest government expenditure. But if you were to graph the government's deficits and debt repayment every month, for every 51 billion the government pays off, it collects 118 billion in new debt. And while treasury bonds are considered the safest investment because they're backed by the government, it seems like the government should invest in a financial advisor. Now the two largest expenses concentrate on improving civilian life, Social Security and the Department of Health and Human Services. Social Security works like insurance companies. They pool money from various people and distribute those funds back to those who qualify. It's primarily for retirees, but it also provides disability and survivor benefits. It's basically financial assistance for people who can't work. The HHS funds a wide range of services, such as public health protections through agencies like the CDC and FDA, but also Medicare and Medicaid, which provide health care to the elderly and low income individuals. But also they invest in medical research via the NIH. Fourth on this list is the Department of Defense, which funds the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines, with most of the money going towards salaries, operations, and maintenance, but can also include weapon procurement, technology, and nuclear funding. Lastly, the Department of Education oversees education in the United States. Now, these five departments account for a majority of the government spending. The next 29 cents worth of funding covers the other 25 or so departments. These include the Department of Veterans Affairs, which provide healthcare and benefits for veterans, the Department of Agriculture, supporting farmers, food security, rural development, and natural resource protection, the Department of Transportation, funding programs for highways, public transit, aviation, and maritime safety, the Office of Personal Management, which manages federal workforce recruitment, retention, and benefits, the Department of Homeland Security, other defense civil programs are other defense departments like FEMA, the CIA, and the Coast Guard. The remaining programs receive minimal funding. If you were to compare it to the original dollar, each of these departments would be worth less than a penny. And collectively, these 20 or so departments cost around a dime. These cover the three different branches of government, various departments, agencies, and programs, and even NASA. So here's the whole picture of where our government spending goes. 